Yeah, let's see if I can get you to share it. Uh, multiple participants. Oh, come on. Oh, there, is that it? Yeah, is it the scripture? That's what you wanted? Okay, okay. Yeah. So here's the scripture for today, uh, the part I'm looking at. Um, this is Matt, Mark 15, verses 33 through 39. At noon, darkness came over the whole land until three in the afternoon. And at three in the afternoon, Jesus cried out in a loud voice, Eloi, Eloi, lima sabachthani, which means, my God, my God, why have you forsaken me? Then some of those standing near heard this. They said, listen, he's calling Elijah. Someone ran, filled a sponge with wine vinegar, put it on a staff, and offered it to Jesus to drink. Now leave him alone. Let's see if Elijah comes to take him down, he said. With a loud cry, Jesus breathed his last. The curtain of the temple was torn in two from top to bottom. And when the centurion who stood there in front of Jesus saw how he died, he said, surely this man was the son of God. There's two parts to this. Now, there's obviously a lot of things we could pull from this for the day, but there's two particular things I want to look at. And the first one is the fact that um, the father has abandoned the son. This part, whenever we sing about it or whenever we read about it, of course, we're hearing if you listen to Christian radio, we, this is uh, a topic that they talk about a lot. And I almost always end up in tears at this point. If you are the kind of person uh, who has not had a great relationship with your dad, or maybe dad walked out, or maybe you never even knew your dad, this can be a real struggle as we talk about God being the father. Um, but here in this time, God actually turns away um, the the scripture says um what forsaken and forsaken i looked it up and to see what it exactly meant it means abandoned or renounced or given up and those are really that's a really harsh or very strong and powerful way um to be just left it's not just like the person walked out it's they were abandoned um, and renounced is even worse, it seems like. And here the father has turned away from his son. And I think out of everything that happened to Jesus, the beatings, um, being mocked and spit on, this must have been probably the most painful part of his whole story, having his father completely turn away from him for those three days. Um, what's really wonderful about this part of the story, and it, it's obvious, um, we know why uh, Jesus did go to the cross for us as a sacrifice, a final sacrifice. And after those three days on, on that Easter Sunday, the Resurrection Sunday, he came back to life. And it was then as when he came back to life that I believe that, um, Jesus and God were restored. And if you look in Mark 16, 19, it's great because we hear now Jesus had already come back and he's already walking the earth again and he's going to the disciples. So it's very clear that Jesus and God have been re restored to each other. But in verse 19 of chapter 16, it says, So the Lord Jesus, after he spoken to them, was taken up into heaven and sat down at the right hand of God. And that's just great because it, it tells us, it reassures us that there was a restoration process that happened between God and Jesus and that there can be a restoration that can happen with us and our own fathers or our own families or those people out there that maybe we've been um, disagreeing with on a regular basis. Uh, Easter is so much, it's, it's new life. And that's what we talk about. Um, Jesus is new life, his resurrection from the dead. Um, we can have restoration with uh, relationships 
and it's uh, it's a great it's a great thing to have. And the next part of this story that always gets me, I love this because if you're an Old Testament person too, uh, kind of scholar or you know much about the Old Testament, this story this part of the story is really great. Um, but I wanted to share with you a quick story now. Maybe, again, thinking about the whole dad thing, maybe you're the type of person who, like, uh, maybe Mark could relate to this a little bit. Maybe dad had this really awesome ride on lawnmower. And as a kid, you always wanted to ride that ride on lawnmower. But that was dad's, and you weren't allowed to touch it. So when you asked, you were given maybe a, a, a pair of clippers or something. And so, or a push mower uh, without a motor on it. And you had to work your way up. The older you got, you got, you worked up to the riding lawnmower. And then there was that day when the dad gate let you have the riding lawnmower to ride on. And it was this, this great day and you were so excited and thrilled. But here's a, here's a story of a, of a dad, um, that did something amazing. Uh, he and his wife, when they bought their house, knowing they were going to have children, he boards up a, a room just off the side of what was going to be his little girl's room. And they, they put a little treasure in there and then they boarded up the room and they covered it over and made a treasure map. When the little girl turned seven years old, they, she wanted some spending money. I guess is what the story goes. And so she, he told her to go clean out a toy box that she had. And at the bottom of the toy box was a treasure map. And that treasure map led her to this hollow space on the side of her room. And he went and got his tools and cut open the door and allowed her into the room where she found this amazing treasure that had been hidden there for so long by somebody she didn't know, or so she thought. I love this story because this dad had to not only set this whole thing up, but waited seven years in order to reveal it to his daughter. In the story of Jesus' death and, um, on the cross, we read that when he died, the curtain in the temple was torn in two from top to bottom. These curtains were massive. They were, they were incredibly huge and heavy. And most people, when they rip something, they would rip it from bottom to top, never from the top to the bottom. And a normal person wouldn't be able to do this. That curtain was there to stop the average person from going into the Holy of Holies, where only the priest was allowed to go. And we know that in order, in the Old Testament times, in order to get forgiven for your sins, you were supposed to bring a sacrifice to the priest and they would sacrifice it and your sins would be forgiven. But here on, with the death of Jesus Christ, the perfect blemish-free last final sacrifice, that temple curtain is torn in two. And it reminds me of this story, this story of this, this father. It reminds me there's, the, there's access that can only be granted by the father. And that's what's happened here. We've, we've got direct access to God the Father through Jesus Christ with this final act of his, his death. Um, and so it's, it's just an awesome time to think. And whenever I think of that, that we never again have to go to a priest and ask for forgiveness. We never again need to do a sacrifice. Um, they're just not necessary anymore. We have direct access to God the, to God the Father through Jesus Christ, our Son. So those are the two things that I really hope that you'll focus on today as we get ready for Easter tomorrow is the fact that there is great restoration. And even in this time where we're having to do everything online and through telephone calls, this is still a great opportunity to call those people out there that maybe you haven't spoken to in a while, see how they're doing and see if you can restore a relationship. And then remember that man, it's great that all we have to do, no matter where we are, no matter what we're doing, we can stop and we can go directly to God uh, through our prayers and um, right through Jesus Christ. 
So thank you guys for listening and let's pray together. Dear Heavenly Father, God, I do thank you for all that you do for us. I thank you that your son, uh, Jesus Christ, died on that cross for us. That he was the perfect and final sacrifice, Lord God, that we would never have to do it again. I thank you that he opened up this pathway directly to you so that no matter where we are, no matter what we're doing or where we go, that we get the opportunity to talk directly to you and that we know you hear our prayers and you answer them, Lord. Sometimes it's not always the way we want them to be well, answered, but we know that you do always want what's best for us. And sometimes what's best for us isn't what we want. Lord God, I ask that you would help us as we restore relationships at this time. Maybe find somebody in our hearts this week that we know our relationship isn't quite right and take the time to reach out to them, either by letter, by phone, or email. And just let them know that we care and love them and help to restore that relationship. Thank you, Lord God. And I pray that you'll be with us as we celebrate Easter together, but separate tomorrow. In your name we pray. Amen. Thank you, Joe. Uh, may God be with you all this day. See you tomorrow. Thank yes. you. Bye, Joe. Thanks. Thanks, Joe. You're welcome. Thank you, Joe.